All right, Liz Peake, welcome back to the show. Am I going too far? Is it really a national security issue, the president's cognitive decline? Absolutely. I mean, imagine, I think we have all tried to imagine what these hour-long conversations are like that he has with President Xi or in the old days with Vladimir Putin. What do we, what do we think he's saying to, to Xi in these, in these conversations, right? We never get a really good readout on those. But going back to this Merrick Garland thing, how many times has he said no one is above the law? How, how often has he talked now recently about weapon, the dangers of weaponizing contempt charges? Stuart, Peter Navarro, the trade advisor under President Trump, Steve Bannon, an advisor in the White House, they are in jail right. because of contempt charges. So no one is above the law except apparently Merrick Garland. He talks about how criticizing the Department of Justice is an attack on our government. In other words, he is not only above the law, he's above criticism. It's a little bit like Fauci talking about I am the science. Apparently, Merrick Garland is I am the law. It is so offensive. And to your point, why is he doing this? Why is he risking what reputation he has left? Obviously, because these tapes must be pretty damning. And kudos to this White House for not having had a single person come out and say, you know what, it really is true. He's not making the decisions. He's not writing the memos. He's not responding to anything that's going on. It's an amazing closed house, this White House, and no one is willing to talk about what is obvious to everyone in America. I want to talk about what's happening in New York at the moment, and you are a New Yorker. Anti-Semitism is on the rise, especially here in New York City. Pro-Hamas protesters targeted the homes of Jewish board members at the Brooklyn Museum. They tossed red paint on their doors, left anti-Semitic messages. Mass protesters also took over a subway car, intimidating Jews. Listen to this. Raise your hands if you're a Zionist! Raise your hands if you're a Zionist! This is your chance to get out! This is your chance to get out! Okay, no Zionists, we're good. This is out, absolutely outrageous. Why is this still happening in New York City? Because there's no will to confront it. And by the way, there are 1.6 million Jews living in the United States, in New York, excuse me, more than the populations of Tel Aviv and Jerusalem combined. So we, it isn't as though Jews are not represented here, not that they don't have a vote uh, and a voice in the government. So what we have, Stuart, is a minority of Americans, a minority, a minority of people in New York who are promoting this anti-Semitism baloney. And by the way, I was listening to coverage of this on Bloomberg this morning. Typical of the liberal media, they don't talk about it being anti-Semitic. It's anti-Israel or anti, you know, pro-Palestinian. They never talk about anti-Semitism, which is clearly we have now crossed the line. That is clearly what is happening here in New York City. It is reprehensible, and it's really time for Kathy Hochul and, by the way, Chuck Schumer and other New York officials to stand up and say, enough, this is intolerable. We will not allow this to happen, but they are allowing it to happen. And one more thing, sorry. Huh? No one gets arrested for any of the yeah. stuff that no, goes not. on. No I mean, look what happened in Washington over the weekend with the defacing of statues and throwing things at cops very visibly on video. Same thing here. Yeah. Why aren't these people arrested? We have video of these Good people. Question. We know who they are. They're dressed as Hamas. It's really with appalling. The green it's, it's, it's a total abdication of responsibility. What's happening in New York is appalling. It Absolutely is. Appalling. It I've is. got to end it there, but thanks very much, Liz. Sorry. Sorry to go on. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> you can go on anytime you like.